Hi everybody, welcome back to a new series of LARP 101. I'm Jess, this is my channel, and today we're going to be talking about how to put together a basic LARP kit. So, with the UK lockdown underway, I decided it was going to be a good time to revamp my LARP kit. Now, I'd originally planned to get a whole new set of kit for a Witcher LARP that I planned to go to in December. However, as the pandemic has officially cancelled all of my LARPs for 2020, I decided that it was best to go back to basics. Now, I'm not crafty in any way, shape or form. I cannot sew, I cannot knit, and god damn it if I ever try to leather craft, so I will leave that uh, to my far more talented friends. So instead I decided to go in for a basic LARP kit haul and so I have gone out and looked at a load of different places where I like to shop and I've bought a whole new bunch of stuff that I can mix and match to take to different fantasy LARPs because at the end of the day buying a new kit for every event is murder on my piggy bank. I don't think it can stand it any longer. So today I'm going to show you the haul that I have bought and I'm going to give you some tips and advice on how to build your very first basic LARP kit. For 100% disclosure, this video is not sponsored in any way, shape or form. I have bought all of these things with my own money and therefore you're going to be getting my exact opinion on all of them. Number one, make sure you have enough outfits to wear a clean one every single day. Sweat is real, and odds are, even if you can't smell it, somebody probably can. There are no excuses for not being sanitary at a LARP anymore. Number two, avoid any logos or emblems. These all look great on custom kit, but it makes them really, really hard to use things in different settings if you have something that is really distinctly an emblem or a logo from one setting in particular. If you intend to reuse kit, it's a better idea to buy plain items. Make sure whatever you get is easy to clean. Dry cleaning all of your costume between each event is wonderful if you can afford it, but if you're like 99% of us, you're just gonna stick it in a washing machine. Therefore, buy stuff that you know you can put into the machine with no problems. Double check all the washing instructions as well, because you'll be surprised how many things still have dye in that can bleed. The last thing you need is to put all of your shirts in together and them all to come out light blue. Number four, plan a shopping list. LARP kit is super pretty and it's really easy to get swept up and buy things that you don't actually need just because they look good. And if you're trying to build a cost effective kit, this is your biggest enemy. So make sure you have a list prepared so you know exactly what you want. And number five, have a colour palette in mind. If you're planning on wearing lots of different things that you can chop and change for different LARPs, it's really easy if the colours go together. So buy colours that flatter each other. Most LARP tops come in three basic colours, white, beige or black, and that is because these three colours flatter most outfits. Some LARPs might express that they don't like pure white clothing because it's too clean, um, but this is a fantasy LARP kit, so a wizard can do your laundry if that's what you want. And black is usually a colour that most um, LARPs will ask you to wear if you're playing an NPC role, so it always helps to have at least one somewhere in the back of your wardrobe. I have purchased two new tops for my generic kit. I have this wonderful pirate blouse. This is wonderful for layering with skirts so that I can look like a barmaid or a simple peasant. And I can also pair it with trousers to try and like a swashbuckling pirate. And then I have this men's fencing shirt, which I got because I am a complete sucker for large billowing sleeves. <laughs> And I can use it for a variety of looks, including a medieval noble or even a musketeer. Generic bottoms can be hard, especially if you're like me um, and are plus sized. Uh, giant thighs and giant calves are not really your best friend when you're looking for a fantasy costume. At the moment, I'm trying to find any pair of LARP trousers where even the largest size will fit me. So at the moment I buy very loose cotton yoga trousers from Amazon. They're not very expensive and I can layer beneath them for cold weather. The elasticated band I can hide under a belt while the elasticated cuffs I can hide under boots. If I could find proper LARP trousers that I could guarantee would fit me and wouldn't break my bank I'd be on them like a shot. So if you happen to know any that are designed to fit a plus size gal like me uh, please drop them in the comments below because I'm desperate. Please help me. I do love skirts though. A full length uh, circle skirt that catches in the wind or billows out as you twirl does tend to invoke a really good fantasy feel when you're wearing one. I have had this one 
which is made of canvas though I've had it for a good few years now and I did not buy it for the purpose of this video and to be honest when I went to the site where I bought it from they didn't have any in stock anymore so I'm not really sure if I should even recommend it but if you can find one um, definitely go for it because large billowy circle skirts are amazing for fantasy settings go on Etsy if you can't find any anywhere else uh, Etsy is great for this sort of thing I like to buy my skirts in hard wearing fabrics because I tend to lump outside a lot um, and being in the UK uh, that often involves the woods where things snag or you trip over and you're covered in mud. Speaking of which I advise that you get trousers or skirts in a darker colour as opposed to light especially if you're going to be lumping outdoors because the last thing you need after a long weekend is to be trying to get mud stains off a lovely pale skirt. Um, when it just won't shift. If you've got dark stuff at least some of it will hide for a bit if you can't get it off. No matter whether you're buying a dress or a wizard robe the best thing you can do is get them in block colours in high quality fabrics. That's because you can accessorise these up to make them look fancy like a wizard for a royal court or you can dress them down for the I live in a cave I'm a hobo kind of look. I even have a video all about accessorising your costumes which I have linked in the little card above. Please check that out at the conclusion of this video. And frankly accessorising outfits is much cheaper than having to buy a whole new set of kit for every single event you go to. Block colours mean that detailing such as um, edging or embroidery don't look out of place as you move from LARP to LARP. Good investments are to get underdresses or robes in the same three colours as the tops so that's white beige or black and then combine them with over robes or dresses that are in block colours that flatter them and that way you can mix and match for different characters to bring a new look every time. A red over robe on top of a beige under robe would perhaps look really good for a priest while that same red over robe over the top of a black one would look far more evil warlock or wizard. I got this underdress from Bergschneider which I layer underneath my Amelia overdress that I got from Holy Clothing. Or even wear the underdress under this skirt for a more heavy layered look that's really really good in the winter. LARP manufacturers often make the same items in lots of different colours which means it's really easy to chop and change with these. Now I go to LARPs to do lots of fighting so I decided one solid investment I really really wanted was a gambeson. Um, I've not had one before, I've struggled to find one I like so I set myself the challenge of finding one. I searched a lot of different places because I'm quite particular about the style I like. I needed it to be a certain length in order to be flattering on me and I also wanted it in blue which means that it was virtually impossible for me to find for quite a few weeks. Also as I'm plus size finding one that not only fits me but looks flattering on me also proved an extra challenge. And then I found this company which is called Armour Arena. They make gambesons in a lot of different styles and a lot of different colours, far more than any other company I'd actually seen and for cheaper as well, which I will admit at first made me a little suspicious. But as I couldn't find anything else I decided to get in contact with them and see if they could make me exactly what I wanted. Because essentially, I'll be honest, I wanted a gambeson with no sleeves because I have this beautiful fencing shirt that I showed you earlier with the big billowing sleeves. I was like, I want to wear something over the top of that but so you can still see the billowing sleeves. So I dropped the message and told them which one I liked and I asked if they could make it without sleeves. And they, and they emailed back and went, yeah, absolutely. We can make it sleeveless or we can even just add, include the sleeves but make them detachable. And it didn't cost me anything extra. So uh, yeah, I jumped on it. I asked for detachable sleeves because while I want it sleeveless now I may change my mind at a later date. Now the delivery cost did bring the cost of the item back up again uh, but considering the range of stuff that they make and the fact that they make them in all these different colours I feel it was kind of worth it. It still really wasn't any more expensive than any other LARP site I've been to looking for a gambeson. In fact the difference is probably less than five to ten pounds and truth be told I love it. I mean it's absolutely brilliant. It's in the exact colour I wanted. Um, it's super comfortable. It's really really well made. I have absolutely no complaints about it at all. I really recommend this company. And look the sleeves did in fact come off. I found these people out of the blue so but definitely go have a look. I've put a link in my description box uh, if you fancy checking that yourself because yeah they are fantastic. And the other bit of outerwear I decided to get was a new cloak. 
Adding a cloak to most outfits immediately make them look a little bit more in character, so there was no way I wasn't going to be getting a new one if I was revamping everything. Uh, I got this one, uh, it's by Mytholian, and it's from a company called Larpin. I got it in canvas because I am a, in the bad habit of standing outside uh, in the cold and the rain and I wanted something that was going to be a little bit more hard wearing so I wouldn't completely freeze myself to death so um, if you live in a lot of hot environments cotton is quite good but if you're like me and in rubbish weather having something a little bit more durable does help though do remember that just because you have a well-made cloak does not mean that that's the only layer you need to wear when in laughing in cold weather so do make sure you're layering up appropriately just because you have a cloak doesn't make you immune to winter chills. Belts and pouches are a staple of fantasy LARPs. Pouches are great for keeping your outer character stuff on you that you really need to keep an eye on, like your phone, your cash, your car keys, pretty much anything that you don't want to be leaving in a tent. And it's a really good place to keep the plethora of weird in-game stuff that you just get saddled with. It's really, really good to have an in-game notebook on hand because at the end of the day, there's a lot of stuff to remember, especially when chaos is glooming all around you at a LARP. Um, also as well, it's a good idea to keep some in-character cash on you because you never know when you're gonna have to bribe the guy trying to kill you. But suddenly you're gonna find yourself loaded up with a load of weird magic rocks, in-game scrolls, and lots of other items that if you don't carry on you, the NPCs keep telling you the world will end. Add to that a scabbard or two for your sword, your axe, your daggers, pretty much anything else that you're carrying on you to help you keep yourself alive. And suddenly you realize that a belt is probably your new best friend. So I got this belt from Darkblade, uh, which is a leather crafting company here in the UK. Uh, I especially liked it because it has two smaller belts on it, which means I can hook twice as many pouches on <laughs> as I could my regular belt because I just, never have enough pouches. As for example, I have this coin pouch that I got from LARPIN. It's absolutely fantastic. It's a nice suede and uh, this drawstring, which means hopefully things won't fall out. Fingers crossed. I have this wonderful alchemy vial holder, which I got from an Etsy store called Discombobulus, which I will also link in my description box. Uh, because it is the cutest thing I've ever seen and the guy who makes this stuff is wonderfully talented. I would recommend strongly that you go and have a look at that store. Uh, I have this scabbard which I got from uh, a site called LARP Warriors. Um, they're very very cost effective if you're here in the UK, I would recommend there. I got this pouch also from Darkblade and there is still an ongoing list of stuff I still need to buy for my belt. Probably one uh, as long as your arm. So if carrying everything on your belt is a bit much, you can always opt into a belt or shoulder bag. Just make sure whichever one you get is going to be high quality because the last thing you need when trouncing through the woods is for it to split and drop all of your things on the floor. I personally wouldn't recommend a shoulder bag if you're planning on getting into combat because the shoulder straps can snag on various weapons and things which makes it really sort of difficult to fight. And if you're an archer like me, I definitely wouldn't recommend having a backpack because trust me, from personal experience, having that many things on your back is an absolute pain in the bum. And speaking of archery, that is actually going to be the topic of my next video when we're going to be looking at how to get started in LARP archery and some excellent tips and tricks. And all with the help of some amazingly talented archers from the Lorien Trust. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this has given you some ideas on how to get started in building your own basic LARP kit. Please like and share this video so that I can help beat the YouTube algorithm. And please subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on my future videos. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're staying happy and healthy. I'll see you on a battlefield soon.